Do you have a DonorsChoose.org project that needs funding? Today's sponsor is Advancement Courses, and they are donating 10% of their sales until September 28th to DonorsChoose.org projects. And if you're needing professional development for yourself, you get 20% off their 200 plus online PD courses using the special code just for 10 minute teacher listeners. So stay tuned at the end of the show. A learner-centered innovation model, episode 341. The 10-Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. So today we're at ISTE 2018. We're talking to Katie Martin, who was one of the keynotes on Tuesday of ISTE, along with some other folks. Now, she has a new book out called Learner Centered Innovation. And Katie, it's Motivational Monday today. People are driving in their cars to school. And, you know, Mondays can be kind of overwhelming. So how can we move to a learner centered innovation model? Well, one of the first things is that I'm encouraging people to do is ask what if and think about what's possible. So often we get stuck in our traditions and the way things have always been. But when we ask and look at situations differently and get to know our learners and think about their strengths and their interests and think about how can I create better experiences for them, we can bring in some powerful energy in the classrooms and students and teachers can be excited to learn together and create amazing opportunities. One of the goals I always have with my students is that I will find a strength for every student. So I'll sit around and think about them and I'll say, you know what, I haven't found one yet for Bobby. I need to really think about him. So you're just saying, think about your students and say, what if, what would, I've got to find that for Bobby, right? Yeah. And I also think asking students, Just taking the time to find out who they are and what they care about. Sometimes we make those assumptions and we think we have to figure it out. And sometimes the best way is meeting people where they are and really trying to understand and saying, hey, tell me about you. What motivates you? There was a video I just shared today and two students were getting into trouble and they were sharing how they always kept getting sent to the principal's office. And instead of giving consequences, this principal found out what they cared about. And these two boys loved gardening. So they made a garden and they created something that kids felt valued and excited about. And they started making an impact for other kids. And all of a sudden they saw their world as full of possibility and started Mm. seeing the principle for good reasons instead of bad reasons. Just because of a simple question. What are you interested in? What motivates you? And what if these kids wanted to come to school? I would think even asking kids who don't want to come to school, what if you wanted to come to school, what would it look like? Yeah, kids have amazing ideas. If you sit down and ask them, do you have ideas for this project? How could we do it differently? And just asking kids for their opinion and their ideas, they have some great insights on how to make school more motivating and exciting and connect to what they're interested in. So even your question is focusing on the students, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. That's so important because don't a lot of times educators sit around and say, what can we do to make school a better place? Yeah. Well, and that's the focus of the book, learner centered innovation. We think of all these innovations and adding all these things to the classroom. And we assume that they're going to be engaging for students, but sometimes they're not. And sometimes they miss the mark. So when we focus on the learners in our classroom and the type of learning we want to see, then we think of new possibilities and thinking of way of organizing the classroom or the experiences that the kids are really motivated and excited by. And it's different for every kid. Yeah, totally. It's not the same for just because they're four year, fourth graders in the same city doesn't mean they have the same passions and interests and ideas. And stereotypes don't work. You can't say kids these days like blank. No. Well, you know, my own son doesn't do social media. So you can't, oh, they all like Snapchat. No, they don't. Now, a lot of them do. But we do have to get to know every single child, don't we? Yeah, we make a lot of assumptions about what people like and we categorize them. And our brains work that way. But if we take a step back and ask people, and I also find giving them problems to solve, then that's motivating for people instead of giving them work to complete. What questions do you have? How could we solve this problem differently? And f- giving people some ownership in their learning and that agency is so motivating. Motivating and it allows people to really take on new challenges. So Katie, share with us an example of a story that really gives you hope for this model working in the classroom where it is learner-centered innovation. Sure. One of my favorite stories is one of my friends and colleagues, um, Kim Cockwell. She's a fourth grade teacher. She used the design thinking process to work with her fourth graders and go out in the community. 
So instead of giving them a worksheet or going through the curriculum, they went out in the community and partnered with organizations. They interviewed people to find a challenge that these organizations were facing. Her students came back, created unique solutions to solve those problems, and worked and partnered with those organizations to make a difference. This was a project they were doing. They incorporated their math, their reading, their language arts. They were learning how to communicate and collaborate, all the while making an impact in their local community. So why does that give you so much hope for what education can be? Oh, so much hope. Just because when I see kids and educators passionate and working together to solve problems that exist in our local communities, I think there's so much that we need to do. We have so many challenging problems that exist in our world today. And when we give kids the tools and the skills and the mindsets that they are problem solvers and innovators, not just going through school because of compliance and to complete tasks. They're motivated and excited, and they're going to be more apt and willing to solve the challenges that we all face in our current lives and our future. And our communities need the kids. I was in Akron, Ohio last week, and I was learning about how some kids went and did some really cool things with Google Maps for prospective families coming to the community and mapped some things that the adults had totally missed that were selling points for their community. And it's like, we need the kids so we can, it's not just about nice for the kids. It's about improving their world, isn't it? And ours. We all live here together and we need them to be able to solve problems and be able to give their insights. Absolutely. I think that's an amazing example of kids being able to solve problems, not just doing what an adult says, but when we give them power to figure out, we, we do miss things and they can bring new light and, and show us how to do things better too. So Twitter was talking all about a lot of things you said this morning. If you had a chance to sit down with 10,000 educators listening to the show and you could just say, please understand this, what would it be? That's a tough question. I think if I could say, please understand this, it would be that we don't have to continue to create the systems that we grew up in. School doesn't have to continue to be the way it's always been. As educators, we have more power than we know. Teachers in the classroom, you know your students, you know their needs. And I think when we design experiences that meet the needs of the kids in the classroom, we are going to serve them all better and serve our collective futures better. Have you ever struggled as an educator? Absolutely. Give me an example. There's lots, but I would say one of the first examples that comes to mind is when I moved from a teacher to a coach out of the classroom, I was trying to find my value and make sure that I was doing things for people and, and I could earn my position out of the classroom. So I started doing a lot of things for people, writing lessons, creating lots of worksheets and doing things to make the teacher's job easier. And if I found anything that I was better served supporting them, coaching coaching them, motivating them, pushing them, not doing things for them. And I think that too often we do that for teachers instead of getting out of their way and creating the support system and the resources to give them what they need to be successful. We try and give them things and make it super simple and then it doesn't serve our kids. But don't we do that for kids too? We do it for kids too. You're absolutely right. We're just, it's kind of, it reminds me of those you try to, you know, you've seen the example where you've got the caterpillar that goes into the chrysalis and then some well-meaning stranger comes along and tries to cut the the butterfly out of the chrysalis. And it's actually the struggle that allows the blood to flow into the butterfly's wings so they can fly. So if you do that, that's one way to kill a butterfly. Yeah. And we're killing our butterflies when we don't let them have a little bit of that productive struggle. Totally. And I think one of the kids nailed it on the keynote on, or the panel on Sunday night. And he said, a lot of teachers want to give you a blueprint and tell you exactly what to do. But my best teachers have given me the tools and support to be successful and solve problems. And when we can do that for kids, we set them up for success. So teachers, it's Motivational Monday. The book is Learner-Centered Innovation, Spark Curiosity, Ignite Passion, and Unleash Genius by Katie Martin. Go out and pick up this book. But remember, go to your school today. And why don't we back up to the beginning and go back and ask, what if? From now until September 28th, Advancement Courses, an online provider of professional development for K-12 teachers, is donating 10% of their sales to funding DonorsChoose.org projects. Go to advancementcourses.com forward slash give to submit your project today. And if you're in need of professional development, the 10-minute teacher listeners like you can get 20% off any online courses with the code COOL20. That's C-O-O-L-20. 
20 with this coupon, a three grad credit course for continuing education, salary advancement, or recertification is only $359. So go to advancementcourses.com forward slash coolcat to learn more and make sure you use that coupon code COOL20. Never stop learning. Thank you for listening to the 10-Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.